Lincoln High School. Uh, just a quick video here to explain to you how to do the typography assignment. Um, so we've talked about the principles of typography. Uh, we went through that PowerPoint last class. So if you missed that, you need to go back and watch the uh, recording uh, posted in Schoology. So for this assignment, we're going to go ahead and basically design kind of like a, a mock uh, web page, landing page, uh, using Adobe Photoshop. And we'll go ahead and just use regular US paper size. Um, and the goal here is to illustrate the principles of typography design. So I'm going to be looking for those things that we talked about, right? We're going to be looking for hierarchy. Um, we're going to be looking for readability, right? Legibility, um, contrast, right? A lot of those things that we talked about. So, um, so try to use the, the style, try to follow the style used in the attached examples. It doesn't have to be exact, but follow the rules of typography, please. So there are several examples here for you, kind of a general basic um, homepage that you might see uh, for a website. So think about what your web page is trying to communicate and then choose a font family, right? So think about your fonts and think about how what they communicate, right? So if I'm making a website for a bank, I probably want to stick to some fairly conservative fonts, right? Because they're very serious. Um, but if I'm doing something, I don't know, like Disneyland, you might be a bit more whimsical. Maybe if, I, if I'm doing a a website for uh, some sort of Halloween, um, what do you want to call it, haunted house or something like that, right? I might choose some sort of creepy font, right? Um, so that's the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a font family that matches your subject matter. Uh, design according to hierarchy, right? So what's the most important inf info? It should be big and bold, right? And the next important is a little bit smaller and then less important, right? Uh, use similarity and consistency. Right, so all the headings are the same size, the same font, right? All your links, maybe to your different pages, all look very similar. Uh, design according to contrast. So uh, contrast, right? Using two font families, one serif and one sans serif. So we'll take a look here at uh, some examples. Um, I think these are examples that, that Mrs. Toff put together. But here's uh, just a designer. Right, if we look, this has, this looks like it's a very much uh, concordance, right? They use one font for everything, um, but added some contrast by changing the colors of the font, right? We got hierarchy um, because we got bigger text up here at the top is our title, and then we got some of these different websites here. I mean, sorry, these different links to different pages here. Again, you know, it looks like a website, right? Their name, their social media links, uh, menu. Uh, here's another example of McCoonies, right? Um, apparently somebody likes sushi, not me. <laughs> um, again, this is uh, using mostly concordance, it looks like. Hmm. Well, I would have liked to see some uh, some contrast, but you know, McCoonies, right? And you're going to get the links here. Uh, some of this is all real simple, right? This is all text and shapes and photos. This is all stuff you know how to do in Photoshop. So again, here's our, our first page, our second page, our third page, right? Again, title each page, same color, same size, same shape, very consistent. All right, here's one with a little bit of contrast. So we got Zebra Tales, the school newspaper, right? So Zebra is in a sans serif font, and then Tales is in this kind of script font. All right, so we got nice contrast there. And then a little subtitle. Um, and then some links to different pages. All right, so these are all these are all examples I believe that uh, that the other teacher made up. But uh, here's an example I pulled from last year. Uh, somebody did a website on Explore San Francisco, um, and so they showed off a few more things that we've learned in Photoshop. Let me see. So here, I mean, we do got lots of shapes here, and it does look like the colors. In some of these cases, the colors were pulled out of. The images and stuff like that, so very nice color design. But but here we go, we got Explore San Francisco, right? And you can see they use contrast, so Explore is in a sans serif font, and then San Francisco is in a serif font. Very fancy, very nice. And then again, only use two fonts on the page, right? Uh, one of the things I will check to see is to make sure that you only use uh, one serif and one sans serif font. So I'll look at something like the A here, and I'll look at the A down here and go, okay, those both match the same. Um, 
Those are both the same uh, serif fonts. Um, and then looking here at, I don't know, maybe the, what could I look at? Because this is all capital up here. So explore. The O's look the same. So yeah, I'm fairly confident it's probably the same um, sans serif font as well. All right, and then she put in a gradient, which is very nice, right? So that's one of the tools we learned in the last couple of assignments, how to put in a gradient in the background. Um, and we got our photos here, and they have a stroke on them. So uh, there I'm seeing the layer styles we talked about. So they put a stroke around the photos. So that's excellent. Um, and then we got our titles, right? Our titles are all the same font, same size, same color, and then our description of what each web page is. So it's an excellent example. So I, that's why I went ahead and pulled it to show it to you. And you got your links here along the top. So... So this is the, kind of the idea, right? So create a web page title, uh, like three links uh, with either images or um, something, right? Basically three images, three shapes or something here in the middle to link you some links along the top. All right, so again, pretty basic website design. Uh, to show you, show you some trips, uh, some tricks here. Um, we'll start off with Photoshop. Um, so we all know how to put text into Photoshop, right? So let me, uh, actually, let me start over. So let me close this. One, beginning. All right, so first thing you want to do is create a new document. So we'll go ahead and hit Create New. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go with 11 inches by 8.5 inches. So again, we want to make sure it's landscape. So 11 is our, our width and our height is eight and a half. Resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Uh, make sure you don't change anything else. It should be on RGB color. It should be eight bit uh, and white background is good. So go ahead and hit create. That, go, that gives us our canvas to work with. And now I can start designing my web page. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to go down here on my toolbar, look for the capital T, that is our text tool. Click on it. Um, I can choose my font up here from the top. Um, it's kind of a crazy font. We'll use that. Why not? All right. Click where I want the font on my page, and then I type in some font. I mean, some text. Right. Now again, I can make adjustments to this text. So if I highlight it, I can change it over here. From uh, looks like this font only has regular. If I choose a different font, sometimes they'll have. Bold. All right. So I got regular, I got italic, I got bold, I got bold italic. All right. Um, you can also adjust the size, right? So I can go bigger, I can go smaller. Um, right here is our alignment. So we got left align, centered, right aligns. So if I had multiple lines of text, that would obviously affect the text. Right, so if I go here, highlight it and go centered, then it's going to center the text, right? Right aligned, it's going to line it up on the right side. Right, so, so that's again how we adjust our alignment. So again, think about what's the most readable, right? So if I got lots of, I got paragraphs of text here underneath one of my images, I'm probably going to want to go with uh, left aligned, right? Now you notice when I click to the move tool, all my options for the for my text up there disappears, so I have to go back to the text tool in order to get those back. And to actually apply them to the text that I've already written, I need to highlight them. Um, so let's see here, we're gonna go ahead and what else can we adjust? We can adjust the color uh, by clicking that black square there and that pulls up our color picker and we can change it, choose a different color. Uh, somebody was asking how do we um, curve our text? So this is the, the warp tool here is the little T with the curve underneath it and here I can give it an arc um, lower arc and you can adjust all these things kind of how much of a bend it has how much distortion it has um, right so that's how you warp the text or kind of bend the text so if I wanted to bend it up which I think is what somebody was trying to do with the last assignment um, I go there and I can adjust the bend Um, and then lastly, 
Um, if you notice, I've already gone in here and kind of, I was messing around with this earlier. So I already put a bunch of extra space, right? I adjusted the tracking in between the letters. Um, so in order to go in there and do that, you actually click on this button right here, which is the uh, settings panel for text. So it looks like a folder with a bunch of lines underneath it. It's also a lot of times over here on the left hand side uh, with an A with some stuff after it. So if I click on that, it pulls this up. And in here, it gives me all the different settings that I can adjust for my text. So, I can adjust. Um, so kerning is actually a different thing. I told you I was a bit confused about that. Kerning is actually uh, how much they lean, I guess. I don't know. But uh, over here, I think this one, the VA is the tracking. So it says VA with that arrow underneath it. So you can adjust that, get the tracking wider, get it closer together. Um, so if you want to set it back to regular, you go back to zero, and that's the regular um, setting for this font. Um, so if I want to increase it, I can increase it. If I want to decrease it, I can decrease it, right? Got to be careful because, right, I get too much and it's hard to read. I go the other way, it can be hard to read too, right? So I got to find something that works pretty well. Um, you can adjust some other things in here. Again, you can adjust the bold here and the, the italics. Um, you can adjust the baseline shift. So if I want to take one letter and uh, adjust the baseline shift, I can move it up or I can move it down, right? And we'll put that back to zero. And then you can also kind of adjust the size, the height. And the width if you want to increase it without uh, adjusting. You can also adjust it with the move tool, right? You can adjust the size that way. All right, so that's text, and then you guys know how to do everything else, right? So everything else is pictures and shapes. So if I want to put in a shape, right, I go to the shape tool, uh, which is down here towards the bottom. If I click and hold on the shape tool, I can get a rounded rectangle tool, a line tool, a custom shape tool, right? So I can put in shapes, right? Um, and I can put in pictures, right? So remember to put in a picture, it's file, and then place embedded, and then I can grab a picture and I can place it, right? And then I can shrink it up and I can move it around with the move tool, right? And I can rotate it, all right? All that stuff we learned in the first Photoshop assignment. And if you're not seeing uh, those options, right? Those little uh, boxes to, to rotate it and resize it, you need to make sure you go up here and click on show transformation controls. All right, so you guys have all the tools, so go ahead and get to it and make a uh, nice website, all right? A nice looking kind of example website like we saw here um, 